Good afternoon, Nikki. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to your turn. On Thank the couch. you. Thank you. I think I'm pleased about this. No, you're, you're pleased about it? it? It certainly came out of left field when you asked me. That's good. Uh, Thank you. So we'll start the same as we start every other on the couch. Okay. So you know the questions you've been writing. Yeah, but you might need to remind oh, me. Well, <laughs> we'll start with the first one. Tell us about yourself and about your life and as much as you want to tell us. Okay. I love coffee. I love the water. I love being near the water, near the ocean. Uh, I love going to like just different experiences like I love going you know traveling to new places um, so I was born in Papua New Guinea yep. I uh, lived there probably only for about six months so you um, remember it well yes yes I used to be black um, but I'm not black anymore <laughs> it's what I used to tell people in okay. kindy that I was black um, I, mum and dad were there because of dad's work. Yeah. Um, I have an older sister, Karen, two and a half years older, and a younger brother, two and a half years younger, uh, Kingsley. Um, obviously have a mum and dad. Yes. Yes, so they live in Perth now, which is good. But So we grew up in, um, I grew up in Papua New Guinea, then we moved to Sydney until I was five, and then at when I was five, we moved to Perth okay. and lived around kind of um, Morley, Dianella, okay. Alexander yep. Heights. Most of my growing up was here. Okay. Um, then went to training college for to be a Salvation Army. No, I miss a bit. I was a travel consultant. So I worked at Belmont Forum Shopping Centre. Okay. Uh, Jane Blades Travel uh, for a few years and loved that. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. Um, and then felt even though I loved it I felt like it wasn't something I was yeah. going to do forever um, I I didn't think it was something that was I was going to be content mm -hmm. in all my life um, and I felt God calling me to be a Salvation Army officer and so I went to Melbourne for two years um, residential training yeah. and then um, I have spent or oh, I spent ten, about 10 years in Victoria Okay. Um, in various roles, mainly in youth work, um, heading up youth department for the state, um, and then, yeah, moved here to Marawa five years ago. Did not want to come. Mm. Not to Marawa. Yeah. I didn't want to be a core officer again, um, but felt very strongly that God wanted me to yeah. be here. Um, I'm married to Mark. Yes. Yes. And we got married uh, about 18, 19, 20 months ago. <laughs> yeah. You're keeping track well. Yes, October anyhow, <laughs> will be two years. Um, crazy out of left field, yep. he came. Um, but is an incredible blessing he is. and gift from God. Yes. Um, quirky, completely opposite to me, but... Just loving to bits. It's a good balance. Yeah, yeah mostly. Yeah, yeah no, it's good. It's good having a soulmate. Yeah. So your first five years predominantly within youth work? Uh, first two years were at core and then for about um, 11 years I was in youth work. Okay. Yeah. So is there a huge difference between youth work and core officer? Yep. Yeah. Yep. At first, I was like, are you kidding me? I'm going to see the same people every week. I'm going to go to church to the same place every week. Because for 10 yeah. years or, or more, I'd been all over the place. Yeah. You know, you, you'd go and visit different core or different churches, you know, at least every couple of weeks. Yeah. And so I was like, really? I don't know. What if I don't like them? You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, good possibility. I'm gonna turn up every week to the same people, and yeah, 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 I was not looking forward to that. But little did I know that I would just love the people, yep, and uh, and just think it's been such a gift to be yeah. here. Yeah. It's just a right fit for me. Yep. Don't really want to go anywhere else at the moment. So, and I know that all of your churches are blessed to have you here. Well, most of them. Most of the church. <laughs> most 
most of the church. There are moments, yeah. aren't there? Yeah, yeah, that's called life, though, isn't it? <laughs> it is. So you were saying that when you were doing the travel agency and you felt that it wasn't the fit, what do you mean, what was your sensation that it wasn't the fit? Oh, it was that I really enjoyed it, but I just didn't think I would feel fulfilled in that all of my mm, life. Yeah. Um, you know, you sold people's dreams. Yeah. Like back then, you'd handwrite, it was a long time ago, you'd handwrite um, uh, domestic tickets. Yeah. You know, there was yeah. no internet bookings. Yeah. It, it just wasn't, it didn't work like that. You know? So more face to face. Yeah. 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 And so. You know, you people would save and save mm. to go away, and so I'd sell them their dream. You know, they come in and say, you know, we want to go on our yeah. holiday. We've been saving for ten years for this, or five years, or whatever. Yeah. And you get to help them fulfil their dream, yeah. and it was I loved it, yeah. like really loved it. But um, I don't know. I think when you have a when you're a person of faith. Those things are enjoyable, yeah. but they don't have lasting consequences, yeah. really. You know, like I wanted, I felt like I was called to do more um, as far as serving God in the mission, yeah. you know, um, and making, I suppose, hopefully some eternal difference, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not saying you have to be in a, in a ministry role for that. You can do that if you're a doctor yeah. or... Unemployed, like yeah. you can still do those things, yeah. but uh, for me, I suppose in those days too, the Salvation Army didn't really have any other options. If you wanted to be in full time kind of work with the Salvation Army, then you really needed to. Um, officership was probably yeah. the only thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, was there a particular point or an event in your life that said, Yes, I'm now going to do it. Um, I was house sitting, so I was still living at home at this point. So I was like 20, 22, I think. I was house sitting, and it was it was in Greenwood actually, which now doesn't seem far away from where my friends would have been. Yeah. But I felt a bit isolated, and so I spent a lot more time on my own than I was used to. And I just remember sitting on the floor going, God, what do you want? You know, yeah. like, I'm happy in my life, but I feel like I'm not content. Yeah. You know? Um, what do you want? And people had said for so many years in my life, um, that I'd make a great officer and yeah. I was like, well, I'm not going to, yeah. you know, and I'm certainly not going to do it because you think it's a good idea, yeah. you know, so all of me, sorry, I've just noticed that this has slipped down and you can only see half my head, which might be a great thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we've got your eyes. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, Greenwood. Yeah, so I was there and I just was like, God, okay, okay, let's see. So I didn't tell anyone yeah. um, at home. I didn't tell mum and dad. I asked for paperwork, kept it under my bed for six months, didn't really look at it. And then then I just thought, okay, God. And I'd known people who'd applied and been knocked back. Yeah. And I said, God, at, uh, several times. And I'm like, you get one shot, God. I'm not applying and applying yeah. if this is what I should be doing then I'm going to put this in once and uh, yeah I, sh I shouldn't have got through I don't think in in my interview <laughs> but I think oh, God had different plans yeah. yeah yeah so it sounded like it had been tapping you on the shoulder for quite a few years before you stood up and said okay you win yeah pro yeah probably you yeah. know I was still fairly young I was still yeah. I was 23 when I went into college so okay. yeah. um yeah I was still fairly young I would say but I I had felt probably yeah. for a while but didn't want to do it because yeah. everybody else wanted me to yeah so yeah that happens you got to do it because God's calling you to do it not because other people want yeah. you to yeah yeah so with all of you well, with your different postings, when you look back at them, do 
Did you find one more challenging or more rewarding? Which one? What was the most rewarding posting for? I think I'm in it at the moment. And yeah. I'm not just saying that because I'm here. I loved being a DY. Yeah. I loved it. I love working in youth ministry. Um, but to go to go into deeper relationship with people and understand people and actually do life with them yeah. is actually very painful, but it's actually very, it's just real. Yeah. It's just, yeah. um, you can go to a greater depth with people and, and then with you, I think, yeah. than just being at a different church every week, Yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and doing one-off camps for kids, which are amazing, yeah. make huge impact on their life. Yeah. But you don't get that doing life. Ongoing connection. Yeah. 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 So although I didn't really want that, actually I feel that that's the most rewarding. Yeah. 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 Good. And painful. Yes. Well, it it goes. Because you feel people's pain. Yeah. You see their joy um, and you experience, to some extent, you experience all that with them. Yeah, you do. And when you have a, a community, uh, there's lots of people going through a yeah. lot, you know, at the same time. Which is why I guess why we say it's a family, mm. because you do share in all of those emotions mm. of a family. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. How has your life changed in the last couple of months? Um, it's got crazier. <laughs> There's been a lot of adapting that's happened. Um, I would say during the day much busier yep. than I have been. So worked all the way through. Yeah. You know, there hasn't been those times where you people are saying, oh, we're getting all our jobs done around our house and, you know, spring cleaning and I'm reading books and watching podcasts and or YouTube. Yep. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. And then I thought, oh, I might like to have some of that time. But um, yeah, it's been, it has been fairly challenging. Yeah. Lots of um, things going on for people too that have really um, been very difficult to journey with them in. Mm. Um, real struggle as far as pastorally. Yeah. Um, so that's been happening alongside it and then all the budding stuff yeah. uh, being donated there's a big sale um you might watch this after the sale so anyhow um <laughs> so it's just you know renovating kitchens and like yeah. it's just it's been crazy it really has been quite crazy so um yeah not a lot different than normal really in lots of ways just adapting yeah. So yeah. even though most of the community closed down, you were still in full flight for the whole time? Yeah. Never stopped? I think the thing that we recognise, <laughs> though, is that we've still been doing... We've still been, in a sense, doing everything that we were doing, yeah. but without the sense of community. Yeah. Um, and that's been a real lack. Yeah. So know? there was a dis- disconnectedness there. Mm. Yeah. You try Zoom and you do all those things yeah. and phone calls and, you know, you're trying as hard as you can to to still make that yeah. real connection, but there's nothing beats being in the same yeah. space. Personal space, yeah. yeah. With people, um, especially going through a lot of those things people have been yeah. going through. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Mm. How did you come to know Jesus personally in your life? Uh, do you know what? I've thought about this many times in my life and I can't actually remember a time where I didn't believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. I actually, I just can't. There wasn't a specific moment that I just went, I think I want to put my trust in Jesus. Because I've been, I brought up in a Christian home where, you know, Christian life was lived out. Yeah. You know, my my grandparents were both Christians uh, on both sides. Um, and so it was, I can't actually think of a time where I didn't believe in Jesus. But there are definitely a few significant times where my, 
where I chose to re-surrender mm -hmm. to God. And that further kind of commitment to and putting further trust in God. Because yeah. there's one thing I think <clears throat> believing in Jesus, but to actually really like surrender your life to him. Yeah. And you think that you've done it. And then you get to a point where, well, for me, I got to a point where I go, actually, no, there's more. Mm. I need to surrender more of yeah. myself. And, you know, that's that's a trust issue, yeah. isn't it? The faith. Yeah. And yeah. to go, okay, well, now I'm going to trust you with this part of my life and I'm going to trust you with this. Yeah. And, you know, you're going through a season of, of just going, I don't know what I'm doing or where I'm going or, you know, for me, being... Um, most of my life being single and you know I was angry at God yeah. at times for you know not meeting that need in my life yeah. um, I still believed in God still yeah. you know I didn't yeah. doubt him but I was yeah I was quite angry yeah you know come on <laughs> where is he you know but then you know to go to just come to that place of acceptance yeah and that this is what my life is, um, was massive, mm -hmm. you know. And that that's about trust too, is to go, yeah. I'm going to accept that even though I don't have what I want, <laughs> I'm going to trust you, yeah. that I'll have what I need. And that, for me, was, um, that was a really painful journey. Mm, yeah. I got there, but, um, and I got there and then, Flopping Mark <laughs> in the same week, uh, you know, decides to get his act together. No, I won't say that. But, you know, it was yeah. just, it was almost like God needed me to go on this journey of acceptance, you know, to go, you just got to accept that yeah. what is sometimes you can't change it. Yep. Some things you yeah. cannot change. Yeah. You just can't. You just got to accept them. And that I'm in this. Yeah. It's a definite thing to accept when you're fighting against something. Yeah. To, to surrender it to God. Yeah. And accept, yes, okay, if this is the journey you've got for me, then this is it. Yeah. But that's a huge leap. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get to it. Yeah. Like I was so good with that. You know, painful, 18 months of whatever it was, of pain and yeah. fight. Like as soon as you come to that, he's like, okay, we can have, yeah. it, have it now. Yeah. <laughs> How are you aware of God in your life? Um, and tell us about a time recently where you've actually experienced God in your life, mm. knowing that he was really active mm. in your life. <clears throat> So I thought and thought about this question because I just believe that God is at work in the world. Mm. I just, it's a fundamental belief yep. that he's at work in the world and that sometimes we see it and sometimes we, we're not aware of it, but he is at work. Mm. So um, how, how do I know he's at work? I think he's... Is just everywhere, you know, like yeah, I said, yeah. but it sounds quite vague to say that. It seems quite broad, but, you know, I see it when there are people who just give and give and give, not of their money necessarily, mm. but of who they are um, for God's work. Yeah. You know, why would, why would you do that? <laughs> You know, he's at work in the world because people put others ahead of themselves. Yeah. You know, he's at work in the world when, you know, out of the blue, um, I'll get flowers on my door at a time where I just really, really needed yeah. that. Yeah. He, you know, he's at work in the world when I sat on my couch the other week. And, you know, we've watched, you know, a fair few sermons and stuff. Yeah. But this just, I just knew it was a word yeah. from God for me yeah. about um, 
we can't be just taking other people's um, crumbs. Yeah. God wants to speak to us directly and and bring restoration, you know, restoration yeah. to our Father. Yeah. You know, um, I knew that was, I just felt it in my spirit mm. that that was a word for me. Yeah. Um, you know, when I sit in, sat in prayer after our Zoom prayer meeting the other, mm. on Sunday. Yeah. And and Michelle and Mark and I were just, you know, continued to sing and just worship the Lord and there was just a sense of God's presence amongst us. Yeah. I don't know, like it I think when we are open to God, it's just everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you see evidence yeah. everywhere. When you take the blinkers off and open the ears. Yeah. And look for him, he's there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This one he didn't know about. Is there a Bible verse or a chapter in the Bible that you have used as your gifting over the, over the years? something that you've often thought back to or referred back to when you've been not in such a good situation. Yeah, and I think I shared a little bit of that when um, I interviewed Sally, um, is that when I was in that moment on that house sitting and I was sitting on the floor and the scripture that spoke to me was about Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares yep. the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to yep. harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. But that, and I just yeah. knew yeah. in that moment, that was my confirmation of, of applying for officership. But then probably two years later, going through a bit of a tough period, yep. um, and I went back to that. Yeah. And I continued to read on and it talked about, you know, when you're in the wilderness, you know, you'll call out to me. Yeah. And I you'll be heard by you know, I'll hear you. Yeah. And I was like, oh my goodness, I didn't read further than that eleven when when I felt the calling, but actually God knew that in that calling there would be and I would go back to that yeah. and I would read further and there was an affirmation there that I've got this. I knew I knew what was gonna yeah. happen before yeah. you did. And then probably five or six years after that, you know, tough time. Yeah. Go back to that. Yeah. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. You know, and then I keep reading two yeah. more verses. And that really spoke to me, those powerful things, you know, yeah. and I just go, you know, God, God knew in advance. Yeah. You know, I only revealed that much and spoke into my life that at yeah. that point, that verse. Yeah. But actually as I hang on to that verse he gave me you know yeah. just this affir affirmation affirmations all along yeah. i know yeah. i know it yeah. i'm in it yeah i knew it before you did yeah. <laughs> i've been there it's okay good yeah, yeah so. is there a change of a scripture now that's challenging for you Oh, there's in, this, in this time and day. <laughs> oh, there's lots that's challenging. For or me. encouraging you. Yeah. I think it's probably um, the encouraging one. But, you know, I look at what's happening in the world and yeah. and what's going on. And, you know, I read my Facebook posts and there are people who are um, can manipulate things yeah. to their own advantage. Yeah. Um, you know, in scripture and... You know, there's some some very warped, yeah. you know, kind of ideas out there. Um, and I think I think this one, my my word for this year that I felt like the Lord gave me was about humility. Yeah. And uh, I never necessarily thought that um, I was prideful. Um, but I think. There's just a beautiful image of humility is it is again about yeah. surrender. And uh, the verse that um, or verses 
from Second Chronicles 7. Uh, it's 14, to 14 and 15. You know, they, all these people have done all these things to please the Lord. And, and actually he, he says to them that he's caused a whole lot of things to happen to them um, that they don't necessarily believe uh, from God, mm -hmm. you know, or yeah. that would be from God. Yeah. They're, they're actually trouble, as yeah. we would call them yeah. in the world. And then it says, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. And I think when we humble ourselves before the Lord, we recognise that our place in the world, not to, not to be treated as a doormat or to yeah, be walked over, yeah. but actually to just surrender yeah. ourselves to, to the God who created us and the Father who knows us, yeah. you know, to recognise us for who we are and recognise him for who he yeah. is, that we are never going to be him. Yeah. And don't try to. No. Don't try yeah. to control things. Yeah. Don't try to, um, yeah, manipulate things. But God is God. Yeah. And we are his children who he loves, you know. So to humble yourselves and pray and seek his face, you yeah. know, that not just seek his will, but seek his face, yeah. you know, the father's yeah. the father's face yeah. who, who looks into our eyes and says, I love you and yeah. you know, I got this. <laughs> but we need to turn from our wicked ways. Yeah. You know. And he'll hear from us. He'll hear from heaven. Yeah. Or we hear from heaven and we'll forgive their sins and restore us. Restore our land. Restore us. You know, I think if we all knew, if I knew, the real intimate relationship that my father, God, mm -hmm. has for me, I wouldn't lack anything. Yeah. I wouldn't question yeah. anything. I wouldn't worry about yeah. anything. If that relationship was restored fully. Yeah. Thank God that I would want that for everyone, you know? That security of knowledge of that you are known and loved and yeah. You don't need to worry about the things I worry about. I, I, I just worry about everything. Yeah. You know, I worry about not doing a good enough job. I, I worry about people not feeling loved and safe. I, I worry about, you know, how we're going to achieve everything we want to achieve. Yeah. I worry, you know? Yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he says not to worry about it, to look to him. Yeah. It's interesting that this is supposed to be the third or fourth out of your interviews where prayer comes up as a reasonably dominant mm -hmm. subject in, in the people's lives. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's so true, is that's our communication with God mm -hmm. and that's how he talks to us and keeps us safe. Yeah. So that's a powerful verse. Well, you know, people make prayer as something that has to be formal or you have mm -hmm. to get the right words or... You know, it's just about sharing with God. Yeah. You know, your heart and hearing from his heart yeah. for you. Yeah. We make it complicated. So you talk to your father. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Blessed, hey? Yeah, very blessed. And as a church, we are blessed to have you as our minister. <laughs> and we'd just like to thank you for the effort and the time that you put in to us your church family, and the community all around us. And we are so blessed as a church family to have you as our core officer. And we just, from everybody, want to say thank you. Thank you for the effort that you've put in. Thank you for all the work that you've done over the months of keeping all of us safe, all of us connected, 
and we know that God works wonders through you. We thank you for your turn on the couch <laughs> and we look forward to getting I and thought giving, I did well, no crying. <laughs> and we're going to all get together and start hugging again soon. <laughs> God bless you, Nikki. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity.